Hey there, welcome to Old Man Runner. In today's video, I'm gonna see how I can run a bit faster. First of all, I'm gonna grab in an easy day pair of shoes and I'm gonna run at a gentle pace, then a little bit faster, and then I'm gonna go all out. And uh, then I'm gonna take a variety of what I think are my faster shoes and run in them as fast as I can go in succession. Then I'm gonna take all the data which I'm gonna gather off this stride foot pod. I'm gonna see what it tells me. Recently I reviewed these, the ASICS Metaspeed Skies. Um, ASICS have designed two pairs of shoes, nearly identical, uh, the Metaspeed Sky and the Metaspeed Edge, which isn't out yet. The Metaspeed Sky is designed for people who increase their stride as they run faster, but have the same cadence, the same number of steps per minute. And the Edge is designed for people who increase both. They both increase their stride length and they increase their cadence. Now I suspect I'm one of those, but I don't know. So I devised this test with a variety of shoes uh, and using the stride foot bod, we'll analyze the data. I decided to do my little test in uh, Upper Mount Street, a street I really love. Uh, it's the best of Georgian architecture where the houses were playing background and then the important buildings, churches and banks were given prominence. Uh, so here you see the Prepa Canister Church and you'll see the, the street Pretty empty, it's Saturday morning. The houses are now all become uh, businesses, but originally the idea was that the houses were wallpaper, the important mon monuments were the foreground, and then you did some personalization on your own doorways. So you'll see me running past a couple of doorways. I'm trying to run uh, the same set, so I run from, from left to right. I start at the same point, I accelerate as fast as I can up to the uh, lamppost in the case of the faster videos, and then I ease off the throttle. Um, and in the slower ones, I'm just trying to keep the pace regularly all the way along. When I came back and I analyzed the data, what I discovered was that in, in the lower runs, uh, it's very inconsistent because I'm kind of trying to run to a set pace and by the time I get that worked out, I'm pretty much done. So I'm gonna look at some of the data that I went for a run on last night. I took the, the Clifton 7s, which is the base shoe I use in, in the runs here. I took the Clifton 7s out on a run for 50 minutes to just try and get an, an average of my, my stride length and my cadence. And then we'll compare that as we go along. So let's have a look, a quick look at Mount Street and go from there. This will give you a quick idea of me running a full throttle from the Pepper Canister Church down towards Marion Square. As you can see by the run and you'll see by the shadows, the, 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 the day is warming up. Uh, <laughs> My hair is falling all over the place. We're still in lockdown. Anyway, uh, what you'll discover is that I picked five shoes because I, I run, then I go around to the car, change them, and then I go around again. Um, and I was afraid that if I didn't get it done quickly, people would come and park in the way, which happened shortly after I kind of finished through the shoes. But in order, first of all, I ran a couple of times in this, the Hoka Oni Oni Clifton 7, which I enjoyed running in. I tried to lope along slowly, then I creased a bit, that I sprinted as fast as I could in these shoes. And then all these other shoes, I'm going as hard as I can to the lamppost and then slowing down. Uh, love running the shoe, the Atreyu, the Battle Lies Within, one of my favorite shoes to, to run in. It just, I don't know, it cheers me up for some reason. Um, ran in this, um, surprised how quickly I went in this one. Uh, then my fastest non-carbon shoe, or what I think is my fastest non-carbon shoe, the Brooks Hyperion Tempo. Uh, Really enjoyed running this shoe. Uh, you're tiring, I guess, through the sprinting, but I then went uh, with the New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite. Uh, and each time I run it, I literally run around to the car, change as fast as I can, zip around, do the same again. And you can see that on the data, which we'll analyze in a minute. And then lastly, the A6 Metaspeed Sky. Uh, so I had a great lot of fun running in all of these. And uh, let's have a look at and see what happens. So in the first clip here, I'm running slowly in the Clifton 7s, and it's at this point, just where I hit the lamppost, that I typically try to slow down. Uh, so I ran around in this a couple of times. You can see the shadows changing. I'm going a bit quicker now, probably near, nearly a tempo day, and uh, trying to go a bit quicker. And then in the next clip, which you'll see, I'm going as fast as I can in the Clifton 7s. So I'm really going for it uh, to the lamppost and then slowing down. Here I am now in the uh, Battle Lies Within from Atreyu. Brooks Hyperion Tempo, going again to the point and then slowing down. Then I'm in the uh, Fuel Cell RC Elite. And lastly, I'm running along in the uh, ASICS Metaspeed Sky. 
And then this one, just so you can see, is the one, this is exactly so you can see the same clip again, uh, where I'm again running in the Metal Peak Sky, which I did three times. Once because I had to get the, the side view, once from the purple canister, and once uh, from this longitudinal view. And then I kind of looked around again in it, uh, just to get a sort of side view of me. So that was me running around Mount Street uh, and uh, early in the morning. And now let's have a look at some of the data from the stride foot pod that we'll try and analyze. So you can analyze it both on the computer and on the phone and each has got uh, advantages. I mean, the phone, well, first of all, if I look at the computer, you can get the data on the computer, but one thing you don't get is the stride length, but you can get the stride length on the phone, it's just you can't see it in as much detail. So there might be a little bit of hopping and bopping between the two, and I have both on screen record, so there might be, uh, yeah, who knows, we'll figure it out. So this is stride on my laptop, and it's got the overall view of a particular run, this is the morning run. The right hand side is the crazy paving, me running up and down, going back to the car, checking the GoPro, all those kinds of things. And you can see that I can turn on and off various metrics. So there I just turned off elevation, and I'm pretty much looking at power, pace, and cadence, all which kind of rise uh, symbiotically with each other. And you can slide across to see the various different metrics and you can freeze on a particular point in time. In this image, I've got power, I've got pace mapped against each other. And unsurprisingly, they sort of relate. The gaps in between where nothing much is going on is where I've stopped changing the shoes in the car or playing around with the GoPro. And in this image, I've simply added cadence in with power and with pace. And again, you know, cadence, you can see it goes up with the power and it goes up with the pace. I had difficulties early on because um, I was trying to run at a set pace, but I was going too quickly. So in this one, I'm doing 406, uh, four, or four minutes, six seconds per kilometer, which is about six minutes, 36 per mile, which is way too fast. So I realized pretty quickly that rather than use these early um, metrics where I was just running slowly, uh, for a short distance, I needed to rerun a slow distance, but over a long period of time, which I do later on on the phone. Here again, this is when I increased the tempo a little bit in the Clifton 7s, but I'm doing 3 minutes 41 a kilometer. I thought I was going really slowly, but, but clearly, you know, it, it was hard to keep at a level even pace. And 3.41 is 5 minutes 55 seconds for a, uh, a mile. So I'm going way too fast for what I'm really trying to get basic metrics. This is more like it. This is me going as fast as I can in the Clifton 7s, which is 242 per kilometer or 420 per mile. And I'm putting out 244 steps per minute and 453 watts. So my cadence has uh, risen. It Typically, it would be 180 or thereabouts, a bit less than 180, 175 on a long, regular run. Okay, I'm going much quicker now. What I've got is I've stepped into the battle lies within and I'm doing 231 a kilometer, which is four minutes, three seconds per mile. And I'm putting out 497 watts and 254 steps per minute. So I'm going slightly faster now again in the Brooks Hyperion Tempo. I'm doing 230 per kilometer or two and a half minutes per kilometer. And I'm doing just over four minutes a mile, four minutes, 1.4 seconds. I'm doing 256 steps per minute. I'm popping out 502 watts. This is the fastest I went in the uh, New Balance Fuel Cell Elite at two minutes, 27 seconds per kilometer, which is just under the four minute mile at three minutes, 56.57. But look, I'm only doing it for a nanosecond, but I am pushing out 555 watts and I'm now doing 252 steps per minute. I did three runs in the uh, ASICs, but it was at the end when I was supposed to was getting more tired, but I got down to two minutes, 33 per kilometer, which is four minutes, six seconds and 23 per mile at 250 steps per minute and 487 watts. I went out last night to Clifton Sevens to get an easy run over a 50 minute period to get a stable sort of metric. And I could see by looking at the phone that I had my, my stride length was roughly a meter. And I can see that my cadence was 173 and it changes very little over that run. So I know on an even paced run in a regular pair of easy shoes, I've got a regular stride length of a meter and I have a cadence of 173 steps per minute. So what conclusions can I take out of all this? Well, the first thing is, is that at my regular speed in regular shoes, my cadence is pretty high. I mean, there's a sort of target people say at about 180 uh, steps per minute, and I'm already running in the mid 170s. So there's a limit to how much my cadence can improve. Uh, so I think it's the stride length. Um, the problem is I have short legs. As my mother used to say, 
Um, when I'm sitting down, I look like I'm six foot tall, but when I stand up, I'm something of a disappointment. So, so I have short legs. So my typical stride is about a meter, and then at, at, at full tilt, it's a meter and a half. And interestingly enough, my uh, the cadence goes up and the, the stride length go up by about 50% when I'm going all out. Now, so what I think the thing to do, based on the fact that my cadence going slow is already pretty high, I think what I've got to try and do is, without growing extra long legs, is try and increase my stride length. So that's what I'm going to try and do. But all other things being equal, what you need is one of these, a light, fast shoe. Uh, I go faster in this shoe, which is designed not for people like me who uh, increase stride and increase cadence, but it's designed for people who just increase stride. And ASICs are later in the year bringing out one designed just for people like me. Can't wait. <laughs> I've signed up. Hope I'm going to get one and then we'll test it then. I hope you enjoyed this video and find it useful. And if you did, it'd be great if you hit the like button. As always, uh, I will happily answer any questions you put in the comments below and there'll be a lot of links in the descriptions. There'll be a big blue subscribe button popping up there and some associated videos there. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.